Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. So let's get this party started! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And now, making his entrance to the ring, please welcome the reigning and defending undefeated WBO Heavyweight World Champion, Joseph Parker!
And now, making his entrance to the ring, the reigning and defending WBA, IBF, IBO, heavyweight champion of the world, AJ Anthony Joshua.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, we honor both of these champions with their respective national anthems. First, the national anthem for Samoa, followed by New Zealand, performed by Miss Marlena DeVoe. Ray Black will sing God Save the Queen. Principality Stadium here in Cardiff, Wales, United Kingdom. Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing, 
in association with David Higgins for Duco Events, proudly presents live on Sky Sports box office and exclusive to the United States on Showtime, the main event of the evening. It's undefeated champion versus undefeated champion. 12 rounds of boxing for the unified WBO, WBA, IBF, IBO Heavyweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by William Hill, StubHub, Manuka Doctor, and JD Sports. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, President and Supervisor, Charles Giles. The International Boxing Federation, President Daryl Peebles. The International Boxing Organization, President Ed Levine. The World Boxing Association, President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. And the World Boxing Organization, President Francisco Paco Barcarcel. Timekeeper at the bell is David Walters. The three judges scoring from the United Kingdom, Steve Gray. From New Zealand, Ian Scott. And from the United States, Steve Weisfeld. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, World Championship veteran, Giuseppe Quattarone. And now, the officials are ready. The fighters are in the ring. And they are ready. Boxing fans, are you ready? For the sold out 80,000 fans in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Kevin Barry. Wearing white with black, he stands six feet four. His official weight, 16 stone, 12 pounds, seven ounces, equivalent to 136 one half pounds. His professional record is a perfect one. 24 fights, 24 victories, including 18 wins by knockout. He is the fighting pride of New Zealand, the reigning, defending, undefeated, WBO Heavyweight Champion of the World, Lupi Sol Eai, La Ole Ole Malea Toa, Joseph Hooker! And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner with his trainer, Rob McCracken. He's wearing white and stands six feet six, Officially weighing in at 17 stone, 4 pounds, 2 ounces, equivalent 242, 1 quarter pounds. This Olympic gold medal champion now, as a professional, has a perfect record. 20 fights, 20 victories, 20 wins by knockout. He is the heavyweight fighting pride of the United Kingdom, the reigning, defending, undefeated. WBA, IBF, IBO, heavyweight champion of the world, AJ Anthony Joshua. Joshua, remember I said in the dressing room, I want a clean fight, okay? Good luck. Two undefeated world champions collide in a unification for the first time ever on British soil. The WBA Super, IBF, WBO and IBO titles all on the line. 
44 wins between them, 38 knockouts, neither's tasted defeat. Just under 80,000 here on this momentous occasion. 215 territories around the world taking this must-see attraction. The glamorous heavyweight division back and rumbling. Who takes home the treasure? Parker will be looking to get in and out. Has he got the edge in speed? Joshua, Trimmer, at this new weight, his latest ever as a world champion. He has the height, the reach, and you suspect the power advantage as well. And he's at home on these stages, Carl. Yes, and he's so relaxed at home. Well, he's so relaxed anywhere, but... Joseph Parker just getting the jab going, as is Joshua. Looking sharp behind that jab, Joseph Parker. Just send it to the body and to the shoulder of Josh. Nobody really looking too worried in range. Joshua's relaxed, he's in the centre of the ring. They're not going to take any chance of this early. He's going to have a good look. Left hand low of Parker. They've worked long and hard on the game plan to come up to try and become the first to beat Anthony Joshua. They felt this fight would happen a while back. And Kevin Barry and his team have been plotting over in Vegas for months. Joshua with the right hand. One or two felt Parker was a little fleshy on the scales, even though he was lighter. Joshua ripped to perfection. And look at that long spearing jab and the reach advantage, Carl. And is right where he should be. Smack centre of the ring, backing Parker up, making him feel under pressure, back against the ropes here. Just looking for the body shot there, Joshua, as he backs up Parker. Parker's in a place now where he doesn't really want to be. He's on his back foot, he's under pressure. Joshua doing very little, but applying the pressure really nicely here for Joseph Parker. It's that imposing physique. Almost towering over Parker, who gets close and looking to get out again. Can he find a way past Joshua's jab? Well, as he moved close, Joshua nicely shot there with a left hook. Also, swinging in a body shot, Joshua with the right hook. Parker just gone back in his shell after a sprightly first minute or so. It's a good shot by Josh. Joshua to the body there, Joseph Parker, straight right, landed with full impact there. Flicking out the jab, Parker. Fighters in the corners, Robert McCracken and Kevin Barry. Second round, the all-white of AJ, Anthony Joshua in fight number 21, the 25th for Joseph Parker. Over from New Zealand, but the Samoans here as well. Fantastic ring presence here from Joshua, coming straight out to the centre of the ring. Backing up Parker with that stiff jab, that height and reach, straight away imposing. Out of range, Parker, he goes in again. Made to miss from Joshua, he's got his distance right early on. Controlling things from centre ring. And you know what Robert McCracken said, the simple two punches. 
and you feel that that jab would negate the speed, but what can Parker conjure up here? A little bit of blood to the nose already. Well, at the minute, this is all AJ needs. He just needs to throw that jab, and I want to maybe put the hook on the end of it, as Ron McCracken asked him to do, if it's there. Parker needs to try and throw fakes and get some head movement, get close to Joshua, but Joshua's so imposing. He's got his game plan, and he's executing it at this minute perfectly. It's jerky from Parker as he tries to get his own jab going. Good defence from Joshua, who spears a right hand back. And look at the length of that jab. And that could become a real problem for Parker. Well, this looks like hard work for Parker, just to be in there throwing these shots. It looks like he's struggling and really trying. We're on the flip side. Anthony Joshua's just relaxing behind that jab. Small, small steps with the feet. Everything's controlled and composed. He knows exactly what he's doing and he's comfortable doing it. Parker coming off that tight win over Huey Fury. Also has had victories over Andy Ruiz, Carlos Takam. But this is a jump up, no doubt about that. Surely the biggest puncher he's ever faced. And for Joshua, another undefeated foe in front of him. Well, this is excellent from Joshua. He's just putting pressure on with the feet, threatening all the time. Parker coming back there with an overhand right, but he's almost, he's got to do something because he's under that much pressure from Joshua. If he doesn't work, he's going to eventually find himself on the end of a barrage of pinches. Yeah, and backed up as well. And Parker will try and find the gaps. He knows that Joshua has been floored by Klitschko, but he did well defensively there, Joshua. He was also hurt, of course, in that second round by Dillian White, who's just behind us. Excellent defence from Joshua, catching the right hand of Parker, just on the left forearm, almost effortlessly. And that will drain Parker and just mentally weaken him. Fires a right and a left in, though, Parker. There is some speed there. Joseph Parker giving away the natural weight and the size which Joshua is utilising extremely well at the moment. Looking for that sharp, dynamic display, Joshua, after a bit of criticism against Carlos Takam, the late change for Kubrat Pulev. Everything a tad flat on that Halloween weekend at the end of last year. Parker will be looking to find holes in Joshua, but it's controlled boxing so far from the Brit. Very controlled. Joshua's not had to throw many punches yet, but the punches he's thrown have been sharp and explosive. And just easily stepping out of range there from Parker's counter-punch. Judging the distance well here, Joshua utilising those physical advantages. He believes he's still just a work in progress, but he was really happy with the training camp in Sheffield. Certain things changed, nutrition better, more rest. But then all the noise out of the Parker camp was good in Vegas. Joshua beginning to drill a combination on the crowd like that. Looking for the uppercut as he comes in close. Well, every time Joshua lets a combination go, it just looks devastating. And he puts Joshua, he puts Joseph Parker under so much trouble when he lets a couple of shots go. Parker really struggling here just to stay with Anthony Joshua. But Joshua, for me, is still in second gear. All the belts on the line, apart from the WBC. Champion Deontay Wilder will be watching back home in Alabama. People clamouring for Joshua Wilder, but he's got business to take care of first. Right hand and a combination. 
And the power beginning to get through from Joshua, who has been so efficient and skilled already. And Moroni in the third round. Well, you can see that power with the speed as well. The speed's explosive. I don't know if I've ever seen Anthony Joshua so fast. Left right, left foot combination. Blistering speed. That jab looks faster from Joshua. And Joseph Park is so used to in previous tournaments having it all his own way, up close, able to let go of combination punches. He's not able to get anything off. Just seems quicker in his movement tonight as well. Joshua with those legs, but there's a left hand from Parker. Yeah. The referee Giuseppe Fartoni has to get in. Well, the heads came together there. Joshua concerned, dabbing away at his eye. The referee signaling to him that you haven't got a cut. A bit of swelling around the left eye of Parker. We don't want cuts to spoil this. Joshua did have damage against Takam. Parker looking to get in and raid. Parker definitely throwing volumes of shots and has had success. Joshua again getting hold of that middle of the ring. Parker looking to utilize those boxing skills. Remember, he's never been down, amateur or pro. Durability, chin. And trying to keep just lightly out of range, Parker. Parker not looking comfortable, he's on his back foot, this jab's landing now and he's looking hesitant. He's looking like he's sort of twitching, not enjoying what's coming back in. Great jab, he walked straight into that. Signs of distress early on here in the round for yeah. Parker. I think that jab just troubled him. Backed up in the neutral corner here. Parker looking to spring out, but... If Parker opts to sit back and stay out of range of Joshua, Joshua's got the height and reach, he's got that speed and power also. He's in no man's land park on the outside. He has to try and step in range and force this. Joshua was so comfortable and so correct with his work. Maybe more thrown though from Joseph Parker. How many punches are landing? Yeah, just off balance there, Joshua a little angry with himself. Parker concentrating. Parker not throwing any feints, he needs to throw feints with his feet, with his head movement, bring that jab up, threaten to throw the jab, just give, give Anthony Joshua something to think about. Good jab from Joshua. This is good work, he's control. Comfortable. There's volumes coming back from Parker, but he's having no success. He's just out of range. That's a jab on the right hand. Definitely the more like catching single shots from Joshua. Plenty of effort here from Parker as he tries to up the tempo. That's what they thought they would have the advantage, the hand speed. Not necessarily the foot speed, but the hands. And he is quick. He is. He needs to step in and throw fast shots and up the work rate, but he's unable to do that because Anthony Joshua was so effective at negating Parker the feint. And he could stop him in his tracks with the jab. But it's that occasional air of vulnerability about Joshua which makes him so exciting. One or two saying the stamina may be an issue down the stretch. And 
He was very close to being stopped by Vladimir Klitschko, but pulled himself up. Look at like Wilder did the other week against Luis Ortiz when in trouble. Got through the very bad patch. Fifth round, the 70th for Anthony Joshua. And the 128 for Joseph Parker. So, more experienced. It's been the distance, of course, on a number of occasions. Parker, Anthony Joshua, 20 wins, all by knockout. Takan was a late knockout. So, to Klitschko. And that jab is. Parker came in and feel the power difference in that. It's getting caught there, Parker, with a couple of shots from, from Joshua. Nothing really too concerning. As he was backed up, he threw a nice jab, Parker. Connected, flush on the face of Anthony Joshua as he moved in. But he's able to just brush that off. Parker needs to get this movement going. He needs to threaten, throw the jab, get his head movement. This is good on the outside from Parker, but he needs to back it up. Oh, Kevin Barry made no real secret that he wanted to utilize the angles. And Get his man through the first few rounds and then come on strong. And here comes Parker, looking to apply the pressure to Joshua. This is good. Well, this is probably what Parker needs to do. Maybe get rough and get rugged and throw himself in the direction of, of Anthony Joshua without being too reckless. A jab, solid from Joshua. What a dream opportunity for Joseph Parker, who's brought a big entourage and his family. That ringside, Mom, Salah, Dad, Dempsey. What happens when they engage and begin to go toe to toe? Well, Parker seems, Parker seems to be quite happy enough with what's going on. So maybe the game plan for Parker is to get Anthony Joshua late, get him into eight round, round eight and onwards, because he's seen the effects of Joshua's size. And, and he drains slightly in previous fights, so Parker could be, could be being very cunning here in, in terms of his game plan, because this is better from Parker. That's good round this from Joseph Parker, and now it's Anthony Joshua that misses with the right hand. And could he become frustrated? The longer Parker's hanging around as well, the more happy Kevin Barry will be with the tactics in the fact that they believe they can come on strong down the stretch and possibly take Joshua late.
how he conducts business. Joseph Parker was introduced to boxing at the age of three by his father, Dempsey, called after Jack Dempsey. Boxing through his veins. Anthony Joshua, as we all know, came to the sport much later. And here we go, Parker starts to unload here. Joshua went for it, and now it's turning into a bomb. Burner here in the sixth round. And the referee gets involved, and there's a timeout here. Well, Parker getting very frustrated today as Anthony Joshua backed up. The ref couldn't really get between them. Gentoff tangled up in the ropes, Parker. He really was trying to land. He was having success there, Joseph Parker. Joshua back behind the jab. But can he use that mobility, that versatility, Parker, to get through to Joshua's chin? He's starting to really increase it here, Parker. Joshua matching with the right hand. And this is why AJ is so exciting. Well, he caught Parker, Parker there, Joshua, with a big right hand, and Parker seems to shrug it off and smile. He seems unfazed here, Parker, but he really is starting to step on the gas and try and make something happen in this fight. He's working really hard, Joseph Parker. And Joshua misses with the right hand. Back comes Parker. Smart from Parker. But Joshua will surely want him backed up against the ropes. Taking in gulps of hair here. Joseph Parker as he backs up. When he works, you can, you can see that he feels the pace. Joshua also breathing. I mean, there's a lot of work there put in by both men. Defence from Joshua, but the speed from Parker. And the right hand as well. Trying the right hand there, Parker, just not quite getting in range with the feet. Feels to me that Parker's growing in confidence here, Carl. He is, he's smiling, his body language. He's showing us that he's, he's quite happy with what he's doing now. Just look down at your ringside, Anthony Joshua. Doesn't look as happy in the settled, and Parker's comfortable engaging. Remember, he has 18 knockouts as well, Joseph Parker. We just haven't seen the sort of highlight knockout reel lately. They put it down to elbow injuries. They say everything's fine now. Boxing well here, Joseph Parker. Yeah, certainly brought himself back into this contest. Making a real fight of it here for, for AJ, not having it all his own way. Looking so powerful as he backs up Joseph Parker. So nothing landing clean. Sloppy from Joshua Parker on his toes. Good round for him. Let's get over to Tony Benny with Andy. Interesting, isn't it? Second half of this unification. First ever a member in the UK with two undefeated world champions. Someone's O has got to go. Has been used many times in the build-up. How are the judges seeing things? Did Joshua win the early rounds? And as Tony was saying, Parker the last couple, or were some of those earlier sessions closer? Could people have Parker in the lead? Well, we don't know how the judges are seeing this at ringside, but we know what we're seeing. And what we're seeing is Joseph Parker now starting to warm into this fight and start to enjoy himself. Can he keep it up? Parker, who 
won the WBO title against Andy Ruiz back in December 2016. Joshua, of course, moving into the world picture with the IBF crown against Charles Martin. You've got Joshua two up. But it's pretty subjective, I think. It is. Them early rounds have got to Joshua. A couple of them were close. They could have gone either way. Or, or indeed been even rounds. Got Parker with the last two, as we've just seen there. And if he can keep this momentum going, Joshua needs to really stamp his authority. Slippery, isn't he, Parker? Cute. Joshua, though. Still looking to march him down. Behind that jab. If he has the distance... Joshua, he looks in control, but up close as he tries the uppercut just off, they split the Kevin Barry, absolutely fuming. The referee had got in and Joshua threw an uppercut. Yeah, the referee called break for Joshua throwing a cheeky uppercut in there. Parker not too faced, he's smiling, but I like the word from Parker before that uppercut because he was thrown to the body, up close with the clinch, he was working away. Giuseppe Quattaroni in his 92nd professional bout tonight, the referee. Seventh world title one. Well, this is where Anthony Joshua will be grateful of that. That less weight and the weight is lighter. Is the referee breaking them too soon, do you think, at times here? I think he might be. The, the referee is very keen and very eager, and these big lumps come together. Yeah, I mean, every referee has got his different style and he doesn't like to see them up close. So this is going to be a range fight which, which favours Anthony Joshua. Body shots from Parker again. The referee comes in. Looking for the right-hand counter there. Joshua too cute for it. Josh looking for the right hand to the body, working away, still backing up Joseph Parker, but Joseph Parker quite comfortably coming back with his counter punches. Good body shot from Parker, referee again splits them. He's not letting them fight, but close. And who does that benefit? Well, if he's not going to let Parker come close and work away, that benefits Anthony Joshua for sure. Five rounds now to finish shots. Five, bang, 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 come on. Right hand, five. Rock McCracken just waking up. Joshua in the corner there. Had patches against Vladimir Klitschko and he just switched off a bit. Joshua. It's had good moments in this fight, particularly early behind that jab. And there it goes again. The spearing left hand. Well, Rob McCracken asking Anthony Joshua to now finish sharp. Last five rounds, pick up the pace, finish sharp. But this is the stage where I'm expecting Joseph Parker to try and work a bit harder and get closer. And once again, the referee splits them up. Yeah, the referee really doesn't like these two big men together up close fighting. And it's a bit disappointing, really, because up close, unless they're holding, really, he should just let them get on with it. Why isn't he? Every time... They get close, he's splitting them up. Not good. No, we like to see the fighters work up close, get them body shots in, hold them all and push and shove. Take loose on the left glove of Anthony Joshua. Parker still sprightly, seeking out the angles. Kevin Barry said double up the jab. volume from Joshua. I feel like when Joshua gets close, 
Is he the one to look to hold? He knows the referee's going to be breaking him up. And Parker waits and then he passes on Joshua. Joshua slowing down slightly, but Parker also feeling the pace, but looking more business-like with the fakes and looking like he's about to explode with something. Parker much later too at 16-12. So a lot of focus on Joshua as Parker comes in with a left hook. Just going through a, a flat stage, the fight. Parker's mouth open. Joshua looking nice to re-establish with the jab and a left hand, and that got through, and Parker has to take it. And again, the referee splits them up. Nice job Inside the last 30 seconds of the eighth. Really nice job from Joshua, and he stepped in, and he threw the right hand and the left up. Is this referee experienced enough to be taking on a fight of this magnitude? Well, I'm soon, not sure. Well, no, as soon as, it, as soon as the action starts to hot up, the referee steps in to break them apart. Ten seconds left in the eighth. Joshua definitely got through. Couple of nice clean, clean shots. Not much to separate in this round, but some good shots from Joshua. And that takes me well loose for about a minute. and he's dominated behind that jab and landing Seconds clean out. of punches. He certainly won that last round for me. But this fight very much there for the taking. Well, will the referee let them fight? I'm sure Joseph Parker wants to get inside and work to that body. Tyson Fury, of course, will be eagerly watching too. Fury and Wilder lie ahead. This is about unifying the WBA the IBF, the WBO, and the lesser-regarded IBO. Who's going to take four belts home to Watford or back to New Zealand? Where uh, Joseph pa Parker's partner, Laney, is heavily pregnant. They've got uh, one daughter, Elizabeth, 16 months old, and another one on the way. What a win it be if he could do it. Joshua tries the uppercut, which is... The punch that unhinged Vladimir Klitschko and led to his downfall in the 11th round at Wembley. And as Parker comes in, surely the perfect one. Yeah, such a good shot, close. He throws it short and sweet with plenty of power, and it's a, it's a devastating punch when it works. Joshua back to the centre of the ring, just happy to stay behind that jab. Quite comfortable where he is. I expected more now. Good right hand to the body from Parker, but I expected more from Parker in terms of work rate and busyness as we go into the last part of this fight. Joshua launches one just slightly out of range. Blocking the jab. Couldn't block that right hand though, Parker. But he comes in. In those cameos, those bursts. It's been a good performance from Parker. Yes, he's had a really good go, Parker. He's, he's trying, he's trying to get in range. It's unfortunate the referee keeps breaking them when they come together. But I just don't think there's enough work for him when he gets there. Joshua complaining about the heads, cracking together. And again, there's tape loose now on the right glove. And the referee does take Joshua back to his corner. Well, he almost led himself. Yeah, I think Joshua made the decision there to go back to his corner. I don't think that was his decision to make, but he made it. Sorting the glove out now. He looks so, a bit annoyed, Anthony Joshua. But that's developing, but the crowd getting behind him.
Well, I hope he's not switching off here, just needs to maintain focus. Keep behind that jab and then step in behind the jab. Lacking the thrilling drama of AJWK, of Wilder Ortiz, even of uh, Dillian White and Lucas Brown last week and Bevekin Price earlier, but there's so much at stake here. And skills are plenty. Parker's certainly got the hand speed. Joshua, the fundamental jab, and when he's in control, he looks the part. Well, every time Joshua... So every time Parker steps in close and gets near Joshua, Joshua's able to just clinch and hold on to him, knowing that the referee will bring him apart. Parker's brother, David Higgins, telling us all camp his man was going to win. What does Eddie Hearn think? He's with Andy. Joshua two in front working of course for our colleague Showtime Paulie Malinaji says it's very close so they're seeing a different spectacle to, to Eddie Hearn but I can see at times Joshua is controlled behind the jab so it's subjective isn't it good work from Joshua there stepped him with the right hand then through the left hook there's a count for Parker Open the up. left eye as well beneath the left eye Parker that caught so hopefully that won't affect his vision but Joshua landed some nice looking Accurate punches here now. And this is where Joshua looks powerful and strong in the 10th round. Parker under pressure. Is he nicely ahead on the cards from a British perspective, Joshua? Or has Parker impressed some of these judges? The referee certainly hasn't impressed those of you online watching at home, and either you can't. No, I like to see fighters left for that couple of seconds when they come together, just to see if one of them wants to start to work something out and work the way out. But this referee having none of that this evening and just splitting them up as soon as they come together. No question the jab has been much better from Anthony Joshua, possibly because of the lighter physique. But Parker has thrown a volume of punches. He's never had a real rhythm, though, has he, Parker? No, he's not been able to get anything going because of the size and the tactics of Joshua. He's not trying to do anything special, Joshua, just sitting behind that jab. He's at the centre of the ring all night. He's been backing Parker up. Very, very rarely is Joshua on his back foot. And as soon as Joshua comes close, he's able to clinch him and do what he wants with him. Body shots from Parker. Brave, that eye's closing. And Joshua's extra strength might begin to pay dividends here. Parker would have wanted it to go long and hope that Joshua would gas. No signs. Well, this is where Joseph Parker would want this fight late on here into round 10. And this is where I'd expect him to... Work harder, throw more shots. I mean, falling in there quite cumbersomely and leaving himself open dangerously to a count from Joshua. Again, the take very loose on the left arm of Joshua. Parker falling in. Joshua trying that uppercut there on the left hook, just missing, but he's threatening these shots and he's starting to let them go. It's good signs for Joshua. Parker still trying, still having a go, still trying to play a part in this. Coming forward, but he seems to be struggling for the engine and now the referee tries to sort the glove out but he just sort of put the tape back on the left glove didn't cut it off joshua control that one
Six minutes to go of this unification. And Anthony Joshua very fast up off his stool. Most people have got Joshua ahead at ringside by two or three. And he heard the other side of the ring, of course. He's the promoter, has it much wider. You've got it fairly wide, haven't you, Carl? I know Tony Bellew has too. Yeah, I've got it wide for Joshua. I think he's just dominating behind that jab and right hand. Polk is trying to work, but he's just not having enough success for me. Yeah, that good spell in the middle of the fight, Parker, but hasn't really sustained it since. Jabbing the body nicely, nasty. Joseph Parker stepping in, trying to work the body up close, but referee quick to separate them, so it's difficult for Parker to really get any momentum going. That's better from Parker. Nice short right hand to the body. Yep, chucking in the Joshua. body shots. Joseph Parker still light on his feet. Joshua sitting controller in. There's the uppercut. Trying again. Well, a couple of big shots went through. I mean, the uppercut's gone in a couple of times tonight from Joshua. So Parker's proven that he can take the power of Anthony Joshua without too much trouble. Parker's been the 12 round distance on his last three fights. Andy Ruiz, Rasvan Kajani, his sparring partner that he fought at late notice, and Huey Fury. Remember Joshua, a clean streak of knockout wins. Vladimir Klitschko took him the longest in this round, the 11th at Wembley. Good footwork there from Joshua, as Parker also works well and puts shots together himself. But Joshua was able to just keep out of the way. Yep, lighter on his feet. Excellent jab. Some really good points to the new look Joshua and there's the uppercut as Parker comes in. Can't quite catch him clean. Joshua holding up close. As soon as they come together he holds but he's getting away with it. If it works, carry on. Boxing's all about tactics. And there's the sparing jab. That's been the most impressive weapon for Joshua Parker continues to move and get in and out and work the body. I think it's been a really good tactical try by Kevin Barry and Joseph Parker. Yeah, Parker's oh, that's there. good work for Joshua, but back comes Parker. Yeah, both on the left hooks. Joshua first, Parker next. No real effects, but Parker backing up here looking. Looking a little bit more distressed than Joshua, which will then tip it Joshua's way on the cards. Signs of pockets of fire. of Anthony Joshua now in a fairly handy lead. Last three minutes. Will he go for the knockout? Will he box his way home to his first ever decision? And what of Joseph Parker? Do they think they're a, a way behind? Obviously, a long, long way from home. They have got a New Zealand judge, though. But Joshua back behind that penetrating jab. Well, I think Joshua... He's got a handy lead, as you can see on my scorecard here. He doesn't need to take any chances, don't take any risk, just box behind the jab, manoeuvre Parker around, make, make Parker take the risk and take the chances. Box really well at times, Anthony Joshua tonight, but Joseph Parker's given everything to, with those fast hands, working the body, trying to negate that long reach. 
and the physical advantages that Joshua possesses. Yeah, there's been some real good body work from Parker at times when he comes in close. He's throwing that jab to the body with the right hand, still working the body. Probably didn't start the body work early enough. He didn't get the success. We talked about the referee breaking him apart, but if he knew the ref was going to do that after he discovered he was, he should change his tactics. Work on his way in instead of sitting back like he is now because Joshua is so effective at range. Body shots from Joshua. Most felt it would be Joshua by knockout in eight or nine rounds. Some were saying he'd have to go the distance. Is there anyone out there that thinks Joseph Parker could have enough rounds in the back? I don't think so now. They all have thought so. There's just not enough success. Parker's trying. He's kept believing all the way through. But when he's on his back foot, under the pressure of Anthony Joshua's long straight jab and right hand, then it's difficult to give him any, any share of the success at all. This is good work from Joshua. Yeah, it's good work from Joshua. He's got his act back together, last few rounds. 50 seconds to go. And a right hand, and he's showing his fitness. And the new regime has paid off. Well, yeah, the, the new weight division of Anthony Joshua. Is this his optimal weight division? Parker's still lively. He's got 17 and a half is about the right weight for Joshua. He hasn't flowed all the way through tonight, but it's been a really good performance behind the jab. Not from the referee, but from Joshua. And it's been a real gallant effort, this, from Joseph Parker. who just hasn't managed to get that rhythm. He has got punches through. He has, yeah, but sometimes, sometimes you've just got to get the job done, and that's what Anthony Joshua's done here tonight. I don't know why the referee's jumping in so early. Joshua was landing with punches there, and the referee jumped in to intervene. Again, definitely not the referee's night. Respect for the two of them in the end. Anthony Joshua goes the distance for the first time in his professional life, and it will go to the scorecards. The three judges at ringside from New Zealand in Scott. Steve Weisfeld in front of us from America, and Steve Gray from Britain. Rather forlorn, the Parker camp. And no real celebrations yet from Anthony Joshua's, but I think they believe that they've won it by a fair few rounds. I think that's about right. Didn't flow at times quite a lot because of the referee, but also Parker's jerky style. You know, he was pot shotting. It was probably the right tactics, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I mean, it was a bit of a clash of styles, really. Anthony Joshua didn't have to engage himself or take any risks, so therefore he didn't. You know, but it was difficult to score many rounds to Joseph Parker. He was trying, he was working. I was quite impressed with his work at times. He was trying to get close and work the body. Unfortunately, the referee broke the action immediately, but overall, you know, it was a good performance from both men. But Joshua doing more and doing enough to, to defend his titles. You've got him by seven, I've got him by five. Steve Farhood just behind us for showtime. He's got Joshua by four. Paulie Malinagi to Joshua. Eddie Hearn saying he only gave Parker a couple of rounds. I'm sure it will be unanimous. Joshua smiling. And against an undefeated... WBO champion. That's a good performance. Not the drama that sometimes we're used to, but it was fascinating from start to finish. Here's Michael with the cards. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Stephen Gray and Steve Weisfeld both have it 118 to 110. Ian Scott scores it 119 to 109. All three judges scored for the winner by unanimous decision. The fighting pride of the United Kingdom, AJ Anthony. by nine once unanimous
a gallant second. Joshua, though, is a step closer to having all the belts. But Deontay Wilder, remember, the WBC champion, unbeaten, powerful, dangerous from America. It's still the fight we want to see sometime soon. And Tyson Fury will be rubbing his hands at wanting to get involved as well. But it is AJ's night again here at the Principality. If he was a little flat against Carlos Takam, he was much better tonight behind his jab, utilising his skills and lighter physique. Yes, yeah, certainly getting the job done. Comfortable enough, quite happy with his performance there, Anthony Joshua, and he should be. Let's hear from him with Andy. Anthony, congratulations. You've added the WBO to your IBF and your WBA. Your analysis of your own performance tonight? Uh, I'm not going to make an analysis of, of my own performance. That's for my coach to do. But my strategy in there was kind of stick behind the jab. It's one of the most important weapons. The old saying is the right hand can take you around the block, but a good jab will take you around the world and that secured another world championship belt. So I stuck behind the jab and I made sure anything that was coming back, I was switched on, I was focused. And 12 rounds, baby. I thought it was hard, right? How did you find the 12 round distance? Light work. It's light. This is boxing, this is what we do. 10 rounds, two rounds, 12 rounds, you know. I know sometimes the bookies have it as, he might knock him out in one round, two rounds, three rounds, but forget the hype, Joseph Parker is a world champion. So I knew he's going to be determined. So sometimes this does become a boxing match, not a fight. So I made sure, and as I said to you in the previous comments and interviews, this will be about boxing finesse. Joseph Parker stated this will be a war. I stated this will be boxing finesse. And I stuck to my word and I controlled him behind the jab, the counter punches. And the main thing we cannot forget is I am the unified heavyweight champion of the world. I was going to come to it later, but it feels like a good time to do it. Do you want to become undisputed heavyweight champion of the world? 100. 100. You know what that, me you know what that means, though, don't you? That means that you would have to face WBC King Deontay Wilder. You're asking me, do I want to become undisputed heavyweight champion of the world? IBO, WBO, IBF, WBA. 21 professional fights. Six world championship fights. Does that not show you what route I'm going in? Forget the hype. I'm not into that. You, the, everyone here knows me better than that. I'm not into the hype. I'm about business. So let's get the business done. And now I've got the time. If it takes my trainer, Eddie Hearn, sitting down and discussing plans with Al Heyman, Shirley, and seeing what the future holds, I'm down to write for whatever, whenever. So you want that fight with Deontay Wilder. We, we know that he's watching on our uh, colleagues at Showtime tonight in the United States. So what would your message be to him? Just like Dylan said, Wilder, let's go, baby! Let's go! <laughs> I can see Dylan White is laughing down there for everybody that's wondering. He knows, he knows. On this side of the pond, we're serious, do you know what I mean? UK Great Britain boxing is on the map and we are representing not just myself we've got all the undercar fighters all the other heavyweight contenders down to the lower weights we are all representing so you know we're dead serious and we're about our business if you don't mind I will come back to you we just want to get a word with Joseph Parker before he leaves Joseph Joseph I know I know you want to don't want to wait too long just word tonight on your performance and the result uh, today I got beaten by uh, a better champion, bigger man, a um, lot to work on, you know, it's a good experience being here. Thank you all for the opportunity to find this big stadium. We want to go back, train hard, plan again and come back stronger. Any regrets at all? No regrets, you know, take it on the chin, better man on the day, so we, uh, we'll be back again. If you did have the opportunity again, what do you think that you would do differently? Work harder, come back stronger, more punches. But I would love to have another go. Just um, back, to, back to the drawing board. I think there was probably frustrations on both sides with the fact that the referee perhaps didn't let you, either of you, work on the inside. Is that the case at all? Yeah, no, we could have worked on the inside more, but no, whatever happened here happened. We can't change it. So we just got to look forward.
you believe you can become world champion again? Of course. I'm young, fit, strong. I didn't go down. I'm fit to go 12 rounds. Um, and I just want to say thank you to all the New Zealanders and Samoans for being here. Thank you to everyone back home in New Zealand and Samoa. Thank you for the support. We'll be back again stronger. Well said. A word on Anthony Joshua. How good is he? He's good. He's a good big man. And like I said, he was better on the day, but I'll be back. Thank you and well said. Let's just get back to Anthony Joshua. Anthony, Anthony. You hold that wrong. Anthony, yeah. back to you. Oh, sneaky. <laughs> 21 fights, are you still a work in progress? Is there, does that performance tonight show that there's still more to work on, that you're not the finished article? Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely, definitely. We're not satisfied, but um, one step at a time. But even though I'm not the finished article, we're at the pinnacle of boxing, so it is what it is. I've always dumped in at the deep end, and um, I'm ready to swim and take these chances. You know the old saying, no risk, no reward. So yeah, we'll see what happens late 2018. It's amazing here what we're able to put on, but are you interested in trying to conquer America? No. All these years, the UK fighters had to go to America, everyone had to spend a heap of money to go to Vegas. We can do it in London, around Wembley, Cardiff. It's local. We're staying right here. We're staying right here. We're staying right here. Okay, so who do you want next if you had your pick? Wilder. Or Fury. Either one. Let's have a word with your promoter really hard. But honestly, my little message this evening, aside from boxing, is it's all about unity. Look at all the people in this place from different backgrounds, different places, and we all come together for the love of sport. So make sure that this positive energy don't just leave, don't stay in the arena. Make sure you take it out of the arena. Have a good time this evening. Unity, man. There's power in the people. God bless. Last one on Deontay Wilder. If you did get him here, if you did meet him in a ring, what would, you, what would you have to do to beat him? What would I have to do to beat Wilder? Get him in the ring and I'll knock him spark out. Thank you very much. Promoter Eddie Hearn, how realistic is what Anthony Joshua's just told us there? It's realistic from our side. He's had 21 fights. He's got four belts. Deontay Wilder was supposed to be here tonight, but he pulled out. Last fight, he boxed in front of about six, 7,000. Show Deontay Wilder what 80,000 sounds like. Can you sit down and do serious negotiations with him and his team? Andy. They don't want it. They've never approached us. He's here. He fights all the champions. He wins all the belts. At 22 fights, he has a chance to be the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Don't forget how fast he's moving. Deontay Wilder's people don't contact us. They don't want to know. He talks the talk. He can't walk the walk. And if AJ says if he wants to come here, he'll get knocked spark out. And you want to do it here? We'll do it anywhere. But listen, have you seen where he boxes? He boxes in some great venues with no one there. Look at what we're doing over here. Look at what Anthony Joshua is doing. Deontay Wilder will be watching right now. And this is called a show. This is called a crowd. He will not beat AJ and these people. Thank you. There you go. Strong words from Eddie Hearn there. Anthony Joshua didn't get the knockout, but he did get the win. So that means he keeps his unblemished record, and that remains intact. And he adds the WBO, WBO belt to his collection. It's easier for me to say at this time of night. He didn't get the knockout. It was a good performance from him. What was your assessment of it? Did it perhaps have the fireworks we expected, Matt? No, but it was a solid performance. You know, styles make fights, and it was a tactical fight. Joseph Parker fought a smart fight tactically. He, he was either way out or way in. He didn't stay in that medium range. He didn't let Anthony Joshua, the bigger, stronger man with a better repertoire, get off. It was frustrating that when they did come together, there was a couple of times where maybe they could have worked it out and, and, and it could have caught fire a little bit more, but the ref was very quick to break them. But I thought it, you know, it wasn't a war of attrition. It wasn't a fight of the year candidate, but it was a good tactical fight against two undefeated heavyweight champions. Joseph Parker fought a smart fight. He, shoot, he used a lot of uh, movement. He was elusive. He was very defensively aware, switched on, wary of Joshua's power. But it just the fight never caught fire in that regard because it wasn't that type of fight. The stars it, it, it didn't, didn't gel in that it way. Didn't, it didn't catch fire because Anthony Joshua exactly. made sure it didn't catch fire. Exactly. Kept him on the jab, played smart, played just did what he had to do. He was happy, and, he, and his, clearly in his, his intention was to box his way through this fight. And to, yeah. For the but first I think, time, I think if Joseph Parker had stood his ground a bit more and engaged with uh, 
Joshua. That would have suited Joshua, I thought, when Joshua, and they did come together, and there was a few moments where they exchanged. Joshua had the upper hand, you know, he had some nice, he had three or four really good right uppercuts on the inside, followed by a left hook, but Joseph Parker didn't want to engage him, I felt. As we're seeing from the screens here, everything tonight was dictated by Anthony Joshua's jab and his footwork. Everybody's mistaken and took away Anthony's footwork. Tonight, his feet were on point. He showed patience tonight, yeah, that's what I perfect. thought. I let's thought he talk, showed really good patience. Let's talk about the referee. The referee spoiled the fight. Did he come in too soon? Did he try and break them up? Every, yeah, I thought so. Every time they clinched, every time they got in close, Look, up close every time they want to have the a fight, he's breaking it up. Every time they wanted to have a fight, he's in there, break, break, break. But I, I think, thought he was I giving think, I think Anthony Joshua would have had the better of those exchanges on the inside. He was the better repertoire. He, nice up because good but, left hooks, but the ref was too quick to break I, them. Actually, I think I thought at first when the when the referee jumped in, Parker was having a bit uh, uh, the better turn of the the the, uh, the the up close and personal, and then slowly but sure as the rounds roll on it was AJ the referee what was he thinking he shouldn't be in there with he guys. I, I was impressed with Joshua's patience tonight he stuck to his tactics he stuck to the game plan and just controlled and dictated behind, from the center of behind the jab Parker continued to hit the body tonight he didn't load up much of the head and the reason behind him hitting the body was he expected AJ to tire as the fight went on mm. and the thing is he didn't and he didn't because he dictated at his pace he dictated at his range